we're going to take a look at uh, probability of compound events today. Uh, first of all, what, what is probability? It's the likelihood or chance that event is going to occur. Um, there's two kinds of probability we're going to talk about today. One's going to be theoretical. The other is experimental. Um, theoretical probability is what would happen in theory. What, what's supposed to happen, okay, according to the textbooks. Uh, well, to figure out uh, theoretical probability, it, it's pretty simple. You take your favorable outcomes or what outcome you're looking for, uh, and you simply put that over the total number of possible outcomes. So the favorables over the totals. So if I ask what the probability is here on this first example of rolling an even number on this on this die, well, the probability rolling an even, well, there, it's a six-sided die. So the total number of outcomes is six. So it's going to be over six. And then how many of them are even? Well, those are your favorable outcomes, and there are three of those. So the favorable outcomes would be three out of six or um, one half. Now, it might ask for this as a fraction. It may ask for it as a decimal. I think most of us know that half is the same as 0.5 as a decimal. And then to change it to a percentage, we, we may also be asked to, to write as a percent. Uh, and to do that, you move the decimal twice to the right by multiplying by 100. Uh, so the probability is 50%. All right, so the next one here says, what's the probability of rolling a six? Well, how many favorable outcomes are there? How many sixes are there on the die? Well, there's one of those. So the favorable outcomes is one. Over the total number of outcomes, well, there, it's still a six-sided die, so it's one out of six. Okay, that's reduced form. That's good. Might ask for the decimal, though. So what is it as a decimal? If you're not sure, you take it in the calculator. One divide six. Enter, you get the decimal of 1.6 repeating, or excuse me, 0.16 repeating. So I'm going to write that just simply rounded off as 0.7. Well, then as a percentage, that is approximately going to be 17% because to change it to a percent, the decimal moves twice. Uh, what's the probability of a multiple of three? Well, how many multiples of three are there on the die? Well, you've got three and you've got six. Those are your two multiples of three. So there is a probability uh, of, of favorable outcomes is two out of the total number of outcomes is six. This is going to reduce down to one third. As a decimal, one third is the same as 0.3 repeating. I could divide that on the calculator if you're not sure. And then as a percentage, that is going to be 33%. Now, they're not going to ask you every time to give all three forms because all three of those are correct responses. Um, but you've got to be able to go into either form just because you never know what the question might uh, might be asking. All right. And then what's the probability of rolling a two or a three? Well, how many favorable outcomes on the die are there? Well, the two is favorable. The three is favorable. There are, once again, two favorable outcomes out of six. And I'm not going to take the time to go through this because it's going to work out exactly the same as the previous example where it was one third or 0.33 or 33%. So favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. All right, taking a look here at um, the next experimental probability. Um, experimental probability is when the experiment's actually been run. We've actually rolled the die. Um, so in this case, it's the number of successes over the number total number of trials that we ran. So here's the idea. Uh, on the die, I can roll a one through six. And we're just going to do some tallies here. And we're going to go ahead and roll this die uh, a few times. And here we go. We got a three. So we would put in here, tally mark, for a three. Continuing, we'd go ahead, roll again, and I think you've got the idea. I could roll this die many, many times, and I rolled a four. So I would tally down that we got a, a four this time, and we would just keep putting tally marks in here every time we rolled the die, getting uh, a different number potentially each time, and when we do that, we end up with another four. All right, so um, continue to roll here. Uh, I'm just going to make this up and say that we've rolled the die a total of 
15 times and we got one once, twice. We got one three times. We rolled a two only twice. We rolled a three, three more times. So there's a total of four. Uh, we rolled a four one more time. We rolled a five once and a six twice. Okay, and if we take a look at this, we rolled a one three times, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's been a total of 15 trials run, okay, pretending that I had rolled the die that many times. Uh, so what's the experimental probability? Well, it's the number of successes over the number of trials. So what's the experimental probability of an even number? Well, even numbers, we would look at that and say, well, uh, that's rolling a two, a four, or a six. How many times did that happen successfully? Well, two or twice, three, uh, four happened three times, so that's a total of five, and six, two more times, we're up to seven. So the probability of that was a seven out of 15. And in the sake of saving time, I'm not gonna get the decimal and the percentage each time here, uh, but you may be asked for any of those forms. Uh, what's the probability of a six? Well, the probability of six, the six was rolled twice, so it's gonna be two, out of the total number of trials that were run, which still is 15. So the probability is two out of 15. Continuing down here, uh, probability of multiple of three. Well, the multiples of three are here, three and six. So three occurred four times, uh, five, six times total. So multiples of three would be six out of your total of 15 you'd always reduce. You would never see that as your answer. Uh, so we know that three goes into both and it reduces to two fifths, which would be 0.4 or 40%. All right, and then finally, what's the probability of a two or a three? Well, two or a three, we're looking for a two, which happened twice, a three, which happened four times. So the probability of a two or three is there's six of those. And so it would be six out of 15, just like our previous answer here, which once again would reduce to two fifths. Keeping in mind, they could ask for the decimal, the fraction, or possibly the percentage on each of those. All right, taking a look here at compound events now onto the back side. Um, key words here, guys, uh, very important. If you see in your word problem and it's talking about events happening and they use the word and, they are going to tell us that we're going to be multiplying. That's what and refers to. If you see the word or, that means that we are going to be doing addition. So and is multiplication, or is go, um, and is multiplication, or uh, is addition. So we've already talked about that. If we take a look back at our previous slide here real quickly, um, the probability of a two or a three. Well, how could I have looked at that? What's the probability of a two? The probability of the two is two out of 15. And then it says probability of two or three. So the word or I said means addition. So two out of 15 or a three. Well, the probability of three here was one, two, three, four out of 15. And so the or meant to add those together. And when I added the two over 15 plus the four over 15, I got this answer of six over 15. So we've already talked about an example or actually a couple of those where we, we dealt with the word or, um, but now we're gonna talk about and as well. So here we go. What's the probability? First of all, let's look at our boxes that we have here. We have some marbles in one box. And to keep things straight, the first box has got four, seven, has got a total of nine marbles. There's a total number. Uh, the number of gumballs here in the second one, I've got three, four, five. I've got a total of six gumballs in my second box. Uh, what's the probability of drawing a red and black? Well, the probability of red is three out of nine, and three out of nine reduces to one third, and means we're multiplying and a black gumball. Well, there's one black gumball out of the total of six. So that is one out of six. And since we have the word and we are multiplying and remember when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators to get one and the denominators to get 18. All right, what's the probability of red or blue? 
Well, the probability of red or blue, uh, red, there are three out of nine. And I'm intentionally not reducing here because when I see the word or, that means I'm adding. And when I add fractions, I need a common denominator. Um, so I've got three over nine. And then the probability of blue is four out of nine. So what's the probability of drawing a red or a blue? Well, I add those together. The probability is going to be seven out of nine. Taking a look at our next one here uh, in the and column. So and we're thinking uh, multiplication. Uh, what's the probability of orange and pink? Well, the probability of orange is going to be two out of the total of nine. That doesn't reduce, so I'm just going to leave that as two ninths. And means multiply. And pink, well, uh, pink, there are two here out of six total. And two over six, remember we can reduce when we're multiplying because it keeps my number smaller. That reduces to one third. So I reduce that. Now I multiply. I multiply the numerators to get two. I multiply the denominators to get 27. The probability that we would draw an orange out of this and also a pink out of that uh, is two in 27. Taking a look here at one more, dealing with an or. So the probability of green, well, there's three greens out of a total of six. I'm not reducing here, and the reason I'm not reducing is because I see the word or, which means addition. And pink uh, is two out of six. Once again, not going to reduce because that gives me my common denominator here of six. And to add fractions, we need a common denominator. So I end up with an answer of five out of six is the probability of green or pink. So remember, or, addition, and is multiplication. Taking a look here at our last couple, uh, blue and pink. Uh, the probability of blue is four out of nine. Pink is two out of six. So four out of nine times two out of six, which reduces to one third. So your final answer here when you multiply is gonna be four over 27. The last one with or, where we're doing addition blue or orange. Well, blue is four out of nine. Orange is two out of nine. So I would take the four out of nine and add, because it's an or, two out of nine. So we end up with an answer here of six over nine, which reduces to two thirds. All right, final example here. Uh, you've got a die, you've got a, a, a coin. It says an experiment is broken up into two parts and the first part of the experiment, a six-sided die is rolled. And the second part of the experiment, a dime is tossed in the air. <clears throat> What's the probability of getting a two and heads. So the question is the probability of getting two and heads. Key word here, the very important word is the word and. And tells me I'm doing what operation? All right, yes, multiplication. So we're gonna multiply. The probability of getting a two on a six-sided die, well, there's only one two, so favorable outcomes, there's one favorable outcome. There are six possible outcomes with a six-sided die. So the probability is one out of six. The word and means we're multiplying. Well, what's the probability of getting a heads on the dime? Well, that's going to be one out of two. So when we multiply those, the probability of getting a two on the die and also a head with the coin is going to be one out of 12. All right, um, that's it as far as uh, our discussion here for probability for today. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. If you have questions, guys, uh, catch me online. We'll see you out in the Google Meet and have a great day.